Ladies and gentlemen, this is TVP World. You're watching another edition of Break the Fake, where we debunk fake news and combat false narratives. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee, and let's get rolling. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into tonight's episode of What the Hell is Russia Saying Now? It seems that Vladimir Putin's propaganda machine has gone into overdrive, trying to explain away their recent airstrike in Kyiv. According to Moscow, Ukraine apparently decided to bomb its own children's hospital. Yes, you heard that right. Russia's Kremlin spokesperson, Dmitry Peskov, insists that Moscow does not target civilian facilities. Of course not, because when the facts point to a direct hit from Russian missiles, suddenly it's a Ukrainian conspiracy, right? Ну и мы, конечно, легко покажем, при том базируясь даже на украинских источниках, что их обвинения абсолютно не имеют под собой никакого основания. Но это же так всегда делает украинская клика, когда чувствует, что то идет не так, то малазийский Боинг, то Буча, теперь больница Ахмат. But let's get real here. Ukrainian security officials and even the UN representatives in Kyiv have all unequivocally pointed the finger at Russia for this horrific attack. Even military analysts have chimed in, confirming that the missile that struck the Okhmatit Children Hospital was clearly aimed and fired by Russian forces. But leave it to the Kremlin to peddle outlandish excuses faster than you can say international condemnation. If it was a Russian rocket, there would be nothing left from the building. And children, and the majority of Meanwhile, Russia's Ministry of Defense has the audacity to claim that their morning bombardment came in response to supposed Ukrainian attacks on Russian energy facilities. Oh, so it's tit for tat now? I guess we're playing twisted game of missile tennis where children hospitals are the net? And let's not forget the Russian state media circus, where the characters like Vladimir Solyev are literally calling for Ukrainian cities to be wiped off the map. Because apparently that's just good television in Moscow these days. Я бы стёр с лица земли Одессу, Николаев, Харьков и Киев, потому что именно с Одессы и Николаева наносятся удары по Крыму. Именно из Харькова используют как базу наносятся удары по Белгороду. И именно Киев является тем центром, где принимаются все решения. So, here we are again, stuck in Putin's warped version of reality where up is down, left is right, and the children hospital apparently is a legitimate military target. The sad truth is that innocent lives have been lost, families shattered, and futures stolen, all because of Putin's reckless ambitions and his enablers' shameless propaganda. После нашей последней передачи, да, Владимир Владимирович, тут очень много выпадов там, как там Гурулев там, Соловьевым там пытаются снести там Харьков, там все остальное, пятое, десятое. Давайте вам простым языком объясню. Бой в городе. Я должен взять вот эти вот эти квартала. Я просчитываю всю операцию, планирую огневое поражение, да, там полностью. Просчитываю потери, которые я понесу. Рассчитываю все количество боеприпасов, ракет, авиационных бомб, всего остального. Но если у меня, если это альтернатива, пустить штурмовый батальон, я понимаю, что примерно 10% обратно не вернется. И этот квартал захватить 10-15%. И второй вариант, я просто его снести к чертовой матери и спокойно туда зайти. Я какой вариант выберу? Очевидно, да? Stay tuned, folks, there's always more absurdity to unpack from the Kremlin's twisted playbook. And remember, while they deny and deflect, real people are suffering. This isn't just a political game, it's a human tragic unfolding before our eyes. Now let's talk about the geopolitical equivalent of a bizarre buddy cop movie starring China's Xi Jinping and Belarus's Alexander Lukashenko. Yes, they team up for what they're calling counter-terrorist exercises right next to Ukraine and Poland's borders, just a stone throw away from NATO territory. Because when you're looking to reassure the world of your peaceful intentions, nothing says trust us like staging military drills within spinning distance of your neighboring countries. 
Now, these exercises conveniently coincide with the NATO summit in Washington, where leaders are discussing how best to support Ukraine against Russian aggression. It's almost as if China and Belarus thought, hey, why not add a little bit of drama to an already tense situation? So here's a toast to Xi Jinping and Alexander Lukashenko, whose idea of international diplomacy is about as subtle as a bull in a china shop. Yep, pun intended, because that's how subtle we're being now, apparently. And another one to Russia, who's probably looking on with admiration, thinking, well, at least someone's trying to steal the spotlight from us. Uh, the world stage never fails to deliver unexpected plot twists, and tonight's performance is brought to you by the geopolitical circus where even the clowns are armed to the teeth. And now for the circus's next act, here's Russia and India. Apparently, Moscow has graciously agreed to release Indian citizens recruited for what they thought was a new job opportunity in Russia, only to find themselves on the front lines in Ukraine. Yep, that's a thing. According to reports from the Hindu newspaper, anonymously of course, because why wouldn't they be, these poor souls were promised everything from help with studies to a smooth transition to life in Russia. What has been conveniently left out, however, was the small print detail of being, I don't know, pressed into military service and shipped off to a war zone. Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, currently gracing Moscow with his presence, has had to gently nudge Vladimir Putin to kindly release these unwitting recruits from their service. So here's to Russia for reminding us all that when it comes to international relations, transparency is optional and honestly is negotiable, and to India, whose citizens deserve better than being caught up in someone else's war games. In this geopolitical soap opera, the plot twist comes faster than you can say diplomatic incident. Thanks for watching, and remember, when life gives you lemons, make sure they're not draft notice in disguise. And with that, we conclude this edition of Break the Fake, but for more news, update, and commentary, please stay tuned to TVP World.